Hello, Zach here from Treehouse Guitars. I am putting together this video because I've had a lot of people ask about how to do this neck joint, which is a uh, fully bolt-on neck joint. I've seen a bunch of different builders using this neck joint recently, and uh, it's really great because it's completely removable. The neck is completely removable from the body uh, without any glue. There's no glue in the joint and you get really good wood to wood contact and it's super stable too. So here is the tutorial on how to make that neck joint or at least how I do it and uh, I hope you get something out of it or learn uh, a new neck attachment method and if you have any questions uh, along the way just put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them or help you out. There are some preliminary steps inside the box that uh, you kind of have to do in preparation for this neck joint. Obviously, because you are going to be routing out this area, you need a block in here. So this is a, I use mahogany, you could use anything, even plywood's nice. Um, I just have a bunch of scrap block mahogany, so I used that um, and it's stable. So this is three inches wide. My heel blocks are three inches wide, and so is this extension block. And that gives me enough space to route out this block and it's still gonna be stable the neck is still going to be stable inside this neck pocket. So three inches wide and this top block um, is seven eighths of an inch thick when I, um, just about seven eighths of an inch thick when I'm done with it. So I glue that seven eighths inch thick block to a one and a half inch thick block on, uh, that becomes this part of the block behind the sides here. Um, and then once those are glued together, I shape that to my mold so that it fits uh, to the curve of the body right here. Um, and that's what ends up getting glued to the sides. Now this block is going to be a bit long, so uh, after I make the top and make uh, this upper transverse brace uh, really big and fat, I, I use a pretty big brace here. I think it's smart because it's gonna actually take some of that neck force that's pushing down here and transfer it over to the sides. That's the, the purpose of this brace, really. Um, so if you can couple it into this neck pocket, see how I've routed just into that brace, um, then that's gonna help um, counteract that neck force and just uh, solidify this part of the body um, uh, to withstand that neck force. I do glue this block onto the side of this upper transverse brace. So to get a perfect joint, uh, you gotta make sure that your upper transverse brace is square on the, on the side of it. Um, and then uh, I just take basically a, a template with a straight edge and I mark where the upper transverse brace is going to be um, by placing the top in place. And then I route the end of this block flush, uh, and then that will give me a perfectly square surface for this upper transverse brace to glue to when I glue my top onto my rim. So uh, it's a pretty basic step. Um, you just have to be careful that you don't get chipping on the very outside edge of that uh, block when you're, when you're routing. So I usually chamfer a little edge there. So I've done that. I have an L-shaped block. I have also, if you've noticed, this cross grain patch here. Uh, along the sides of the fingerboard, or along the sides of this block here, you can get cracking because uh, the expansion and contraction of different woods at different uh, humidities can cause a crack next to the block um, in, in the top. So, a uh, cross grain piece here is smart and you can actually route it into and across the block. So on my top there's a cross grain piece that goes all the way across. Um, now on this L-shaped block I actually route out a ledge with a template that has a window in it. It just clamps over top of the guitar here and I route out that ledge and that ledge is just the right thickness that that patch fits nicely in when I'm fitting my top to my rim, right? Um, so it's 
a fairly basic um, and it's just a nice way to reinforce this these areas here so that there's never going to be an issue with cracking. Otherwise that's basically it for uh, preparation. It is nice to have the wider heel block um, against the back because that will also help uh, counteract any twisting of the neck over time. This neck joint definitely takes longer to make than a dovetail or um, any other bolt-on with a glued fingerboard. Uh, but it's, in my opinion, well worth it because over time, if, if for some reason your guitar needs a neck reset, it's basically a 20 minute job as opposed to uh, uh, several hours worth for an a experienced tech. My version of the neck joint has three bolts, one up into the extension of the neck here, and then two into the heel of the neck. And these two actually, uh, in my case, actually thread into a, an aluminum rod that's reinforcing this heel, which I also recommend because a, a rod reinforcing the heel is smart. Uh, oftentimes, guitars that get snapped at the heel snap somewhere here because the heel is short grain and it's having to take all that neck force. So uh, reinforcement, even if it's a wooden dowel, is a good idea. But uh, if you use an aluminum rod, you can actually have it tapped. And your bolts that hold your neck on just bolt into that aluminum rod. So kind of a, a smart system, I, I think. This is pretty crucial in getting a really tight fitting neck joint. If the spot on your guitar is perfectly flat and the area that you route onto your neck is perfectly flat um, matching your template, then your neck joint will be perfect um, without any flossing. So that's one another really nice advantage about this neck joint is that uh, once you have your jigs set up really well, your neck joint will fit perfectly every time as long as your router jigs are set up onto your guitars properly. This is a bit crude of a jig but um, I've got uh, a way to adjust the tilt of this neck forward and back and also side to side using two different turn screws. So um, as I'm sanding the end of this neck, I can actually fine tune it until it's um, exactly aiming the right direction and that'll get me ready to route the neck joint um, in the right alignment. So I'm going to get the right um, alignment in both directions and then I'm going to basically sand up to my uh, line that's going to be the end of my tenon. a bit and then check the alignment this way as well and it's got to go head's got to go to the right just a smidgen aiming in the right direction side to side. So I just have to adjust the back version forwards. Uh, using a pencil you can mark the end of your heel so you know where you're taking material off. It's important to use a sharp sanding belt um, when you're doing this because otherwise this is going to heat up quite a bit and you can actually have um, your end grain checking so, and you really don't want that, obviously, because then you have a bunch of little cracks in your heel that could pose a problem later on. So 
So I have the right angle I want, um, that I want. Now I just have to sand up to my line uh, where the end of my tenon is going to be. Double check it just to make sure it is good. Good that way. And it is... Actually, you could go back just a smidgen. Um, Perfecto. Okay, so now I am ready to route the mortise and tenon neck joint. Alright, so here I've marked my uh, center line of the top, the center joint. So I have something to line this jig up to. It's a very simple jig. It's just basically the mortise cutout, which I'm going to use a pattern bit to um, make exactly the same as uh, this template. So I've got this lined up with the center line on my top and the way this is made is this is bolted square to um, the mortise in this jig. So this being clamped against the top is going to make this square with the top. Um, and the way I make my guitars the, the upper bout is actually flat so um, it doesn't, I don't have to worry about a radius or anything in this. Uh, otherwise you can put a radius in, just make it uh, square with the, the center of the radius, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, now this is in place. I'm just going to turn these, um, make sure they're tightened on both sides. And I like to make these quite tight, just so that it obviously won't move when I route. Um, the other thing is you have to make sure it's um, down against the guitar body. It looks like I am. There we go. So that is ready for the router. Um, I like to make my tenon half inch deep. It doesn't really matter that much to me because I use a, an aluminum rod down the heel of the of the neck and that's what my bolts bolt into so I don't really need any extra strength there. The tenon is mainly just to align the neck um, in its position uh, this way. The other part of this jig is very simple as well. Um, I like to make a square line just to make sure my jigs lining up properly square to the the top surface of the fingerboard. So there we go. I have a square line. Um, this jig has little stops on the bottom of it to align it square with this surface on the neck. So theoretically, it should line up perfectly, anyways. Um, but that line will let me uh, make sure that it's aligning properly. Now I can screw these in. Um, this top screw goes into uh, where the truss rod is actually going to be, the truss rod slot. So first I'm going to use a uh, spiral bit and get a spiral bit with a template guide bushing on the router base. Um, this means that I can hog out most of the material before I use the template bit just to finish everything up flush with this um, mortise jig. Um, you'll notice this is this has been thinned down. I made this acrylic piece 
a millimeter and a half thinner than the one on the neck to make the tenon. That way I don't have to adjust the routers at all and I will get a little space between the, the bottom of the tenon and the bottom of the mortise. So uh, that space is nice because you don't want that to bottom out otherwise your, your heel isn't going to be uh, tight against the body. So that's kind of a nice, a nice handy feature, um, just, a, just a different thickness um, template. So here we go. The final pass, uh, basically lowering the bit to where my line is for where uh, where my 14th fret is going to be. Um, so I have a line on the neck where the 14th fret is, or where the neck to body joint is, and it doesn't really matter how deep the tenon is, <clears throat> as long as I make the neck joint where the neck joint is supposed to be, so at the 14th fret on this guitar. That's done. Now I just got to move over to yeah, perfectly to my line. Awesome. Now I can just move over to this jig with the same router depth. Um, it's just okay. Now I can check the fit. Nice. There we go. There's the next joint. With a little space, as you can see, there's a bit of a space between the bottom of the tenon and the bottom of the mortise. That's what you want. Next, I can drill my holes for my bolts. So, um, in my case, I'm using uh, bolts that thread into uh, an aluminum rod and that goes down the heel of the of the neck. So, there's going to be an aluminum rod that goes down into the heel, reinforces the heel, but also the bolts go through and uh, thread into that rod. So, um, this jig. Uh, I'll attach a link to a previous video on uh, just describing this jig. Um, it basically aligns everything for me. So uh, my bolts, obviously there's, there's a block here in the top. So the two bolts that go this way can't interfere with this, this block. Um, so they're a little bit lower just, just so um, if you're making this jig just make sure you put them low enough that the bolt heads will clear that block. So this is uh, how it works. There we go. 
go. Make sure it's bottomed out. Um, and then I can uh, drill that through. You'll want to hold a, uh, a block on the inside just so you don't uh, tear out the grain. so it doesn't rattle around in there. Okay. Um, on the neck, it's a little bit of a different story. I have to clamp it in. Um, we'll move the device for that. This one's hard on the ears, so this one's a loud one. So I'm gonna run the uh, three eighths inch bit down the length of the heel and uh, pop out the other side. So, um, but this squeaks pretty loudly. So <laughs> turn the volume down on the video. not all the way through yet I'm gonna have to um, but this heel is is deeper than it's going to be so I'm gonna bust out the back side it's gonna make a bit of a mess but I'm gonna end up cleaning it up anyways um, there all right so that is through and I can now drill my quarter inch holes down. Uh, I know how deep to go now because there's a hole there. These are the rods I had made for this. Um, I can see oftentimes the hole needs to be widened out a little bit. Yeah, looks like it. Um, this is where it gets loud.
go. There, so it's lined up. Bolts look nice and straight. Um, so I can glue this aluminum dowel in into place. And uh, I don't want to... Uh, basically, I want to put enough glue in that it won't allow that aluminum rod to twist so that the holes aren't aligned. Um, so I'm going to leave the bolts in like this. I'm going to tip it up and I'm going to put a little bit of glue in here. Not very much though. I don't want the glue to go into where the threads are for these bolts. I'm going to use the uh, not so thin glue boost because uh, I don't want it to travel into the grain and then show up in the heel. So I'm actually going to bias the glue in, into this side and then um, spray it with accelerator. There we go. Uh, another thing you can do just to make sure that no glue ends up into the threads is um, spray a shot of that uh, accelerator down this hole so that any, if any glue does does make it down to the where the threads are, it's not going to actually uh, uh, get into the threads then dry. Okay, so this side, um, something to note on this side, there, I don't have the aluminum rod all the way flush with the neck because, for a pretty important reason, I am going to route out this section, um, so I don't want to have to route out the aluminum. So this, I actually have a hole that's about 12 millimeters, just, just over 12 millimeters, 12 and a half millimeters deep, um, so that I don't hit it with the router when I'm routing that section out later. And you'll see that when I get to that step. The next step is to cut bolts the right length so that they don't um, go past your inserts or, or whatever you're threading into and split the heel. So I'm just going to plop these in here. Um, there we go. Okay. So now. I know I want I know that my uh, rod is well I can measure it now past the body or the the neck joint I know I don't want to go past let's say it looks like 15 millimeters from here for me I'm gonna Assume that uh, these bolts are going to sink into the wood just a little bit, so I'm going to go 14 millimeters um, past that. So mark these bolts. I uh, file it then I, I know for sure I can see that line so that's good for that one all right so I can cut those if you make a little jig like this to cut bolts um, it sort of protects you from uh, going into the usable threads with the hacksaw. Um, so I, I really quite like this jig, it's really simple. Just a hole with a slot in it. Now this is very hot.
So when you're filing, uh, filing that cut clean, it's important to leave the beginning of the thread um, clean so that it actually threads into your inserts. Um, otherwise it'll just start cutting and wrecking your uh, inserts or whatever you're using to thread in the bolts into. So I'm going to check that. If I have to file it a bit more, then, then I'll file it a bit more, but um, should be close or where I need to be. Fourteen, perfect. Um, so I'll just make sure those thread into the neck easily, and then I'm good to to move on to bolting it on. No problems. And no problems at all. Good. So now you can actually bolt them together. Um, solid. Um, now I just have to make sure this is flush, looks nice and flush, no worries there. Um, if it was a little bit uneven, you can actually just sand in this spot and uh, flatten it out. Um, you do want a bit of a fall away to the fingerboard once you get to the top anyways. Um, so. Um, that transition isn't a big it isn't a big deal if you sand it ever so slightly. So, but this looks really nice and flat. I can uh, get ready to route this pocket out. Um, yeah. Here's another jig uh, for this process, and that's just a uh, little window cutout so that I can route out this exact same shape. Um, across the neck to body joint and this this is going to be um, I'm gonna have a wooden rectangle that goes into this uh, area and that goes into that block that's an extension of the heel so it's gonna be about 12 millimeters deep uh, which is um, just before I hit this aluminum rod this aluminum rod is more than 12 millimeters deep so um, but I also want to um, I want to catch that upper transverse brace because that'll help support this neck. So with this jig I have it set up so that it screws into the neck with short screws um, into where the truss rod slot's going to be anyway. So I'm going to route out those those holes once um, I'm done this part. but. Right now I want to span the neck to body joint. I want to go up to my uh, rosette because I know that once I'm against my rosette, I'm just going into the upper transverse brace two or three millimeters or so. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna screw that into place there. An important consideration is uh, this: the thickness of this jig. Um, I know I've got the way the geometry of my guitars works, it's almost flat here, so it doesn't matter that much, but um, if your neck angle is a bit back more, this jig is going to be up in the air just a little bit. Uh, if it's rigid enough, that's not going to cause any issues for making like a curved uh, mortise in, in that area, but uh, I know that's not an issue here. You can support the end of it as well if you need to. So aligning this with the center line of my neck, I've got two screws. Now clamp it into place.
uh, before you do route this, it's Im fairly important to check the alignment of your neck as well in case something for some reason went off. Um, just make sure it's pointing in the right direction and that it's angled back enough or forward enough, whatever kind of guitar you're making. Um, but I know I'm good to go, so I clamp that and screw it into place. Now I can route this out. Uh, I'm going to again take most of the material out with a, a spiral bit and a guide bushing. So my final pass is going to be with the, the template bit with the bearing on it. Um, but before that I'm just going to try to get down to where I need to be with a, a spiral bit just to take out most of the stuff. So I have clamped the base of the guitar and the, the top of the guitar just so this doesn't <coughs> move around on me when I route. I've also set my router depth, the maximum router depth, uh, the maximum uh, depth stop to about 11 and a half millimeters because my final depth is going to be 12 millimeters. I want uh, very little material taken off with that last template bit. So the guide bushing is going to fit in there and I'm going to take two passes to get down to 11 and a half millimeters and then I can follow it with a template bit after that. So with the first pass you can see I've gone in through the top and I am into this cross grain plate that I've inset into a ledge on this heel block. So, um, and you can see I, this is where I would have screwed my my tenon template, routing template onto my neck. So I'm going through that screw hole right now. Um, now I'm going to lower it one more time, and we'll see a whole other layer of things happening. Okay, now you can see you can see the top layer here, and then right below that, right here, is that cross grain piece with the grain going this way. So you see the end grain, and then below that and up here is the block extension, the L, L part of the block. You might also be able to see that I've just started to route into that upper transverse brace. So now um, this isn't. Uh, flush with the template so I'm going to route it into it a little bit more and uh, take the sides off as well because uh, there's going to be a little bit more material gone everywhere um, with that template bit. So one last pass and that should be ready to make a matching block for. I have set this to 12 millimeters past the thickness of this um, routing template. Uh, <clears throat> you may have noticed that a lot of my routing templates have these holes in them uh, this is quite handy because I can just place the router in over top of this hole and then I can measure the depth uh, in relation to either side of the bit and it's a really accurate way to measure the depth. So uh, holes like this are really handy. I usually try to leave a protrusion in the acrylic somewhere where I can put a hole like this and uh, measure accurately what depth I'm going to be routing. This is set. I'm just going to plunge it in. It's it's uh, going to take about half a millimeter out of the depth, so I don't have to worry about the bit um, grabbing the router or anything. But uh, here we go. I can uh, do the final pass. There we go. Now I'm ready to make a matching uh, wooden piece that fits into that mortise. I can uh, unscrew this now.
nice and clean, nice and flat on the bottom. It's, uh, yeah, perfect for it. Now I just have to make sure that this next block fits nice and snugly into there um, and uh, not lose the block in there because <laughs> it can be hard to pull it back up. <laughs> 